Former NXT champion and big meaty meat man Keith Lee made his full main roster debut on Monday's post-SummerSlam episode of Raw, going straight into the WWE Championship picture and being booked in a match against the biggest heel in the company, Randy Orton, for this Sunday's payback. Which, going by a seemingly large portion of viewers, is a burial worse than him debuting as the Keith Lee experience in a back-shaving segment with the Usos. A video yesterday on Lee's call-up had comments like, Damn, Vince is screwing up Keith Lee already. Unhappy face emojis times two. Saying they hated his debut and that now he's on the main roster, his nickname should be Limited Keith Lee. Most of the criticism has been aimed at WWE's new presentation of Lee, where he was given new entrance music that was nowhere near as good as his NXT one that he sings on and his new ring attire of baggy shorts and a vest. Sleeveless Keith Lee. Which is speculated to be because Vince McMahon wants his top serious babyface to cover up their stomachs if they don't have a six pack. It's either fat shaming or Vince trying to trick viewers Brock Lesnar has come back. These two cosmetic changes have unfortunately completely overshadowed any positive reaction to how hard Lee was pushed on commentary and in storyline compared to other NXT call-ups. A low bar, I know, but one WWE did hop over for a change. And there's been so much online backlash. Online backlash, title of your pay-per-view stream, Lee himself has spoken out. On his new entrance theme, Lee tweeted, Music is out of my hands, period. Leave it be, I'll sort it out later. And when people brought up his ring gear instead, Lee added, Leave it be and have some patience. Take a deep breath. It's going to be okay, I promise. Let me handle that stuff. Replying to a fan who said Lee doesn't have to answer the critics, Keith even responded to them. Of course I don't have to. I don't owe anyone an explanation. It is simply my way of showing respect to the people who have supported me. I don't want people caught up on small things when what should be acknowledged is on my debut, I mixed it up with Orton. Way bigger deal. And thanks to Fightful Select, screw you Sean Ross Sapp, I know what the fans want, not you! We now know the real reason behind Lee getting a new theme. And for once, it wasn't just a case of the main roster wanting to troll NXT fans. WWE have reportedly been urging wrestlers to drop any themes written by CFO Money, the producers behind the golden age of NXT entrance music of the last five years. From Bobby Roode's Glorious to the Undisputed Era's Undisputed to Carl O'Reilly Air Guitar. Following CFO Money's reported money dispute with their publisher earlier this year, whom WWE have a quote, terrible deal with, WWE decided to stop using any of their music. According to Fightful Select, the publisher gets half of all royalties. To get around this, WWE have been leaning on their in-house music team, which has failed to produce memorable songs following the firing of Jim Johnston several years ago. But even though WWE is urging talent to drop their CFO Money theme, some wrestlers have hated the new music presented to them so much that they outright rejected to have them. Lee, however, is said to have signed off on his. Hopefully it's just a placeholder until they come up with something better, especially with the wrestling music blog Arena Taping tweeting, for those unsatisfied with Keith Lee's new theme, he is getting an updated theme with lyrics by Sergio Veneno at Payback. Does this make you more optimistic about Keith Lee's main roster chances? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere wearing a sleeveless vest. Before we get on with the rest of the news, I'd like to say a big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. But what is a VPN, you might ask? It's a virtual private network, which means your smartphone, laptop, tablet, whatever can trick the internet into thinking it's somewhere else. Where are you, Luke? Well, my laptop thinks I'm in America, where I'm watching US Netflix, which is way better than the UK one, but I'm actually in West London. <laughs> and you, Pete? Even though my life- I've ran out of time for Pete. But for you, yes you, I'll bet you've got a lot of time right now in self-isolation. So get yourself Surfshark VPN using our special links below because then you'll have access to an entire world of content by kicking geo-blocking in the butt. And for all our American viewers, you can use it to access BBC iPlayer to watch all our ridiculously short-lived comedy series. How have we only got 14 episodes of The Office? And make sure to use our promo code WrestleTalk because that gets you a massive 85% off and three months free. 
Surfshark are really helping support us here at WrestleTalk during these hard times, hard times. So please at least click the link below and check them out. It looks like Stu Bennett has got himself a VPN in real life because he can now reaccess his previously geo-blocked WWE character in the United States. According to Pro Wrestling Sheet, Bennett will be returning to WWE with his Wade Barrett name for a one-time guest announcer spot on this week's episode of NXT. The article notes he has not signed a full-time deal to rejoin the company. Despite winning the first season of NXT and being the leader of the Nexus, Barrett was released from WWE six years after his main roster debut when he told management he wasn't going to re-sign his deal. He's been focusing on his acting since and has worked as an announcer for ITV's WOS Wrestling and Billy Corgan's NWA. But now to steal a Wade line, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Breaking news, the big dog is b- No, no, not that, but Cody, I love him like a brother Rhodes, is taking an extended break from AEW. Cody lost his TNT title to Brody Lee in a brilliantly booked squash main event on Saturday's episode of Dynamite. Afterwards, the Dark Order continued beating up all the Nightmare family, laying out Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall, and Brandy's unconscious bodies next to Cody on the stage, with the final shot being Cody holding his wife's hand in his. In an angle that actually made me cry when I watched it, I was low on sleep after Slammer Slam, okay? It just got to me. PW Insider is reporting that Cody will be off Dynamite for an extended period of time to sell the Dark Order beating, which Mike Johnson speculates could have something to do with a new TV role he is going into production in Georgia soon. Stars is Heels, where Stephen Amell specifically asked Cody to take part in the series when Amell's casting was announced last year. The TNT title match appeared to have really helped Dynamite's ratings, as even though it changed nights, the episode still drew 755,000 viewers, only down 5% from the previous week, making it the fifth most watched show in the 18 to 49 demographic. PW Insider notes that Warner Media executives are extremely happy with the episode's performance, as it showed a loyal audience following AEW to a different time slot and it being up against NXT TakeOver XXX. But AEW wasn't the only wrestling show performing better on TV, as WWE's ratings appear to be turning around thanks to the Thunderdome. We don't need Monday Night Raw received its best viewership figures in months, pulling in over 2 million viewers, which is up over 350,000 from the previous week, performing significantly better in the key 18-49 demo. Which is quite something, because according to multiple sites, Vince McMahon tore up the majority of the show and only finished making changes an hour into the episode actually being on air. It's almost comforting in a way. It reminds me of pre-COVID times. The Wrestling Observer and Fightful Select added that the biggest victim of the changes was Raw Underground, which had plenty of content filmed in advance, like matches from Marina Shafir, Jessamyn Duke, and the pre-announced Ivar vs Dolph Ziggler. But it was all scrapped last minute. Oh, yep, that's my time. I got off on my phone. Yep, the three-week push is over. The Thunderdome isn't all positive on Pikachus, though. Some Thunderdome fans streaming their reactions from home have attempted to troll the broadcast, putting up fire velveteen dream signs, a picture of Chris Benoit, and one even playing footage of a KKK rally. WWE has since issued a statement on the wrong kind of pro wrestling show invasion. This abhorrent behavior does not reflect WWE's values, and we have zero tolerance for these unacceptable acts. We are working to ban those involved from future events, and per our policies, any inappropriate action result in the removal from the live stream. Meanwhile, Metribution can petrol bomb all the generators they want. Where's the consistency? An image is doing the rounds claiming to have figured out all the masked attackers that invaded Monday's main event, speculating that Caden Carter, Mia Yim, Shane Thorne, Dominic Dijakovic, Dio Madden, and Chelsea Green are the NXT stars called up to form the faction. Perhaps the storyline will actually build to something at the next WWE pay-per-view following Payback, which 
which thankfully isn't three days after. Going through the contract between WWE and the city of Orlando for their residency at the Amway Center, reporter Greg Angel has seen a pay-per-view will take place on September 27th, and that WWE is getting a great deal, paying at least 200000 to rent the Amway Center for 78 days. And now here's a roundup of everything else in wrestling news. Triple H revealed in the post-takeover media call that new NXT champion Karrion Cross had actually separated his shoulder during the main event match. Cross has since undergone an MRI, and he's feeling positive, revealing in an interview, from my point of view, no, I won't be out for a significant period of time. One of the other big talking points from Saturday's TakeOver show was that actually really good debut match of famed podcaster and little-known NFL star Pat McAfee. While talking to ESPN, he's revealed he's not under contract to do anything else with Mr. H right now. Someone else who exceeded expectations back in 2019 was Kofi Kingston, who won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 35 from Daniel Bryan. But his championship run never felt like the company was behind him, which, according to a new series of revelations, is because they weren't. Former WWE writer Dave Schilling has tweeted, no one who had any real sway believed in Kofi. The plan was Kofi getting squashed by Brock from day one of his title reign. Day one. Kingston's treatment was also brought up by Big E on the new episode of Talking Smack, where he called his loss to Lesnar and subsequently falling out of the title picture disrespectful. You know who else is disrespectful? Sean Ross Sapp. And you know what? Adam Blompier too. They both tried to make FTF the official tagline of this channel on our SummerSlam live reactions. But I know what the viewers want better than anyone. I know what you want better than you know yourselves. You want a PG, family-friendly product. And that's what you've got here on Wrestle Talk now. And tonight, at Quizzlemania X7, I'm gonna do the same to Parts Unknown. I'm gonna retain my Quizzlemania championships and show you all, once and for all, Ollie is good for you. Especially because I've got my bestest bud calling the shots. With Adam making his competition debut, Luke Owen is filling in as the quiz master, and he's going to call it right down the middle. Wink. Set your reminder for Quizzlemania X7 today by clicking the video on the right where Adam Blompier's hair and eyebrows are on the line for charity. And if we raise enough, he'll get a Jam That Jam tattoo too. And what's the real reason why a WWE star has been suspended? Click the video below that for that. Subscribe here for daily wrestling news videos. I've been Ollie Davis. Jam That Jam.